Hello, everyone. My name is Addie Bronca, and for those of you who don't know me, I am a senior who transferred to Brooks as a sophomore. Although my main motive for leaving the public school in my town was mean girls, I guess I have also lived up to the lie I presented to admissions about how I wanted to gain access to opportunities provided by an independent school. When I was deciding to apply to these independent schools I blatantly lied to, Brooks was placed dead last on the schools I wanted to go to. Not because I had any reason to dislike it, but because I was a closed-minded preteen who didn't know anything about the school and couldn't bother to do a little research. When the decision letters came back in March from the schools I applied to, I was only accepted to two of the four, Brooks and St. George's. Brooks was the obvious choice because it was so much more fun to swim illegally in Lake Kachikawik than it is to swim legally on Second Beach. I was unaware until after I was enrolled at Brooks that I am actually a double legacy. Both my grandfather and his son attended Brooks. My close friends and I, my close friends have heard me brag countless times about how my great grandfather was awarded the Distinguished Brooksian Award and has his name on a plaque above the front desk of the library. My teammates on the lacrosse team have also heard me point out his name on the plaques of the athletic center every time we walk out to practice. His name is formerly Joseph Scherer, but I always knew him as Ho, not because he was unholy, but because he liked to garden. After Ho's time at Brooks, he went on to graduate from Harvard, Tufts Medical School, and became a captain in the Army. Despite his impressive accomplishments later in life, he never seemed to lose sight of Brooks. He became a member of the Alumni Council and president of the Board of Trustees. Though when Ho was awarded Distinguished Brooksian, he was too sick to travel to receive the award for himself. So his son, who also went to Brooks, had to receive it for him. While his son was a student at Brooks, he was infamous for being the class clown. So when he went to receive the award for his dad, he thought that the unenthusiastic expression on Mr. Packard's face was due to the mischief he got into as a student and the fact that he was not his successful father. As an incoming student at Brooks, I was so intimidated by the story that I convinced myself that Mr. Packard hated our family, which is why I didn't have a conversation with our head of school until earlier this spring when we sat at seated lunch together. Although I was still very young when my great-grandfather passed away, I have always had so much admiration for him, not only because he was very successful, but also because he had a magic tree in his front yard. During my visits to Rhode Island as a kid, my brother and I would run up to his house so that we could grow lollipops on his magic tree. We would th throw blue pebbles onto the magic tree, and when we came back the next day, it would be covered in lollipops. Today, I realized that he was tricking us into fertilizing his tree for him. <laughs> but in my opinion, that just makes him a genius. So you may be wondering why I'm telling you the life story of a random dead man. As a senior, you tend to do a lot of reflecting on your high school years. For me and my friends, this means reminiscing on embarrassing or tragic events as underclassmen. Brooks has allowed me to experience things that I never would have otherwise. The challenges we have experienced as a school and in our personal lives throughout our time here have been unpredictable, from heartbreaking losses to typical high school drama. One of the challenges that I have persevered through through my time at Brooks was when my roommate was put through four emergency surgeries in order to remove a blood clot from her leg. As one of her closest friends and the person whom she shares a life with, it was hard for me to watch her endure so much pain and confusion throughout her time in the hospital. I had very limited communication with her given that she was loaded with morphine and had a tube in her neck. The not knowing throughout the most scarring part of her condition left me in a constant state of anxiety. I did not know if I was ever going to share late nights of reality TV and binge eating talkies with Chloe again. After many nights alone in our luxurious mansion room, Chloe returned. She was the same old Chloe I know and love, just with a stylish new compression sock on her left leg and an absurd amount of drugs that she had to inject herself with daily in order to survive. Chloe's condition is quite literally one in a million. And the fact that she ended up being such a huge part of my life decreases the probability of us crossing paths even more. What Chloe went through obviously was not the most ideal high school experience for her, but I'm glad that I got to be crippled by her side riding in our golf cart to the academic building. 
Although this event did not happen directly to me during my high school experience, it taught me so much about my values and how to deal with conflicts in life with those I love. Although a lot of reflection I have had during my senior year has revolved around experiences with my friends, my internal reflection has revolved mainly about my great-grandfather. I wonder about what his experience at Brooks was like, and I wish I had the chance to bond over similarities and differences with him. I know that he would love to hear all about Chloe's rare condition, given that he was a surgeon, and how I was able to support her through her recovery. Due to his passing, these conversations only exist in my imagination. When Ho attended Brooks, it was an all-boys school, and there were a total of 100 students. These are the most obvious differences, but I can never stop myself from questioning what dorms he may have lived in, what the dining hall food was like in the 1930s, and the fact that he might have given a speech right where I'm standing today. My admiration for my great-grandfather is part of the reason I enjoy my time here at Brooks so much. I'm constantly reminded by my grandma, his daughter, about how happy he would be if he knew I went to school here and how proud he would be of my success. The idea of this role model of mine appreciating my achievements as a student, peer, teammate, and friend motivates me to be the best Brooksian and future alumni Brooksian I can possibly be. My message to the underclassmen would be to value the experiences that Brooks provides you with. Life happens, so I cannot guarantee that they will always be positive experiences, but even the challenging ones will lead you to the right people in the right places. Thank you.